Okay, hey guys, welcome to Button Adventures, fitness, boxing, and farming goat therapy. With all the constant confusion in the mainstream media about what a healthy lifestyle is like, the main goal here at Button Adventures is about making health fun and easy for you. Woo -woo. I'm Coach Lita. I have a background uh, with a Bachelor of Sciences in Nursing and experience in geriatric and mental health long-term care. My boxing career consisted of 45 amateur fights winning the Canadian Light Welterweight Golden Glove Championship of 2013 and a ringside silver national medalist as well. I have a record of one and one as a professional boxer. And in 2017, I was voted Fab Female Health and Wellness Entrepreneur of the Year in Greater Toronto Area. Now as a coach full time for the last eight years and a proud goat mom, very proud goat mom, of 11 Nigerian dwarf goats. Yes, 11. I specialize in animal therapy and coaching people to move beyond their perceived limitations and find their inner athlete through the sport of boxing. Welcome to the weekly goat vlog. Why goat, you may ask? Well, I grew up on a 300 acre farm with cows and horses and other animals that were big like that. And there is huge, which is a real pain in the patootie to clean up after. And that the information overload that we have in society is kind of like the huge piles of that cows and horses give out. Go goat, however, is like small little lumps of rabbit turds. Make it easy to clean up and fertilize your garden with. And then as a boxer with 45 amateur fights and one-on-one -on -one as a professional, when I visualized my success in my mind, I was the goat, the greatest of all time. When you box, to be a winner, you got to tap into that mentality. But being a goat does not mean that you need to get into a ring and fight. It's about using the tips and insights and wisdom that comes from this goat blog to sprinkle into your everyday life so that you can have that own goat mentality for yourself. And that's what my goal here is, Button Adventure, to give you that digestible fertilizer to grow that mentality for you. So make sure you hit the like and subscribe, smash that subscribe button on YouTube and follow along weekly for lots of goat tips. Today's special guest is Helene. Helene has been a partner of Girls Just Want a Box since 2018. Prior to this, she had many years in the health and wellness space and her own personal running journey with a number of different races and one full marathon. When she was introduced to boxing, it was love at first punch. I love that. She was introduced to the sport while living in London, England, a country synonymous with boxing. Her original intention with, bo with boxing was to use it as a tool for her fitness training. Unbeknownst to her at the time, boxing was an alternative form of therapy for combating her OCD. When she moved back to Canada, two years later, she was looking for a safe and clean space to continue her boxing training. Through referrals, she was introduced to Christina and Girls Just Want to Box. After many classes and a road trip to assist with the provincial team at the Nationals, woo -woo, Helene and Christina became partners. Since then, she has her NCPP Level 2 Coaching Certificate, Level 1 Cut Course Certification, Assistant and Team Manager for the Provincial Team at the 2017-2018 Nationals. Her DTF Level 1 Strength Certification. She's a member of the Female Development Committee with Boxing Ontario for two years and has her first amateur bout. The personal development, both physically and mentally, pushed Helene to ultimately join Girls Just Want to Box, helping to encourage all women to take on the sport provide a safe and supportive space, and with the addition of Girls Just Want to Box's headgear, provide equipment that properly fits so that they can perform optimally. Although her involvement in Girls Just Want to Box started out of personal growth, GJWB is now building a movement for girls and women of all ages to learn, grow, and build strength physically and mentally through the sport of boxing, both in studio, virtually, and through events and workshops. Woo-woo! 
Welcome to Lead. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I am very excited to be here and chat to you. And I love, love your sweater. So appreciate, you. appreciate that. Yeah. A pretty awesome girl uh, sold it to me. <laughs> okay. So can you let, um, educate a little bit about everybody that's watching here a little bit more about what the organization of girls just want a box is about. Like we know, we know, I like, know if you look at your shirt, the hashtag, hashtag protect the pretty is a very important fundamental principle of girls just want a box, but it, can we go a little bit deeper in terms of, you know, how you and Christina saw like the, the future or like discuss the, the relationship of the organization and where you kind of came together and want to grow it too? Sure. So I know that uh, I had joined later. Christina had started Girls Just Want a Box in 2007. Uh, and I know she's going to do a part two of this because she wants to share a bit of her side of the story and there's lots of conversation to talk about. But in 2007, it took her a really long time and she can explain this more in detail, but it took her a really long time to get her her first amateur fight. And that whole experience leading up to it brought her to this. Why is it so difficult? Why is this so hard? And in her brain, it just came out, you know, girls just want a box. And that's how the name kind of started. And that's where I guess a brief history of that came from and her vision and goal of girls just want a box. And I think it kind of has been throughout this entire time is not only giving girls and women the opportunity to compete, but also giving them the tools to do so. And the tools have evolved over the years. Now we have gear that is even uh, more tools in their, in their kit. But it was originally to start with, uh, and I, I don't know your experience, Lita, with this, just because I can't remember when you were in the amateurs or not. But typically right now, if you want to, if you as a female go into a boxing gym and you don't specifically say right off the bat, I wish to compete. That is something that I want to do in the future. A lot of the times women will be sent to a fitness boxing class within that, within that gym space, which might not necessarily teach them the uh, technical aspects of boxing, which really does tap into the mental, which gives you that yeah. full boxing, uh, all the boxing benefits. And so what Christina was is there's either fitness boxing or there's amateur boxing and there was nothing in the middle. So there was nothing providing women with the technique and the, again, full benefits of boxing and then it also allows them, if they do want to pursue an amateur, let's say, call it a career, they have the tools to do so. And something that I, you know, maybe mentioned on some other things is because I started for fitness, I implemented some bad habits. When I wanted to compete as an amateur, I had to get rid of all those. And let me tell you, that is a lot harder than just starting and learning the basics and going through those drills over and over again. So Christina's vision was, and still is, is let's provide a space for women to learn the real sport, get all the benefits from it, both physical, mental, full picture, and then let them decide if they want to compete. And if they do, they now feel empowered because they were given all the tools and the skills. And they also weren't just kind of put in a box of, oh, you're just for fitness or, okay, now you have to be amateur. Um, and so there's a lot with girls just want a box, which is why it's kind of hard to condense sometimes, but essentially we're girls just want a box for fun and girls just want a box for real. And the two are also connected because as a girls that just want a box for fun, let's say for the fitness, they should still learn the real sport, but while you're also doing the real sport, let's also have some fun at the same time, because at the end of the day, this is your extra time that you're, you're using. So yeah. uh, basically the tools of the skills of boxing, learning the real sport. Uh, when I had joined in 2018, we really started talking about what else can we add? And Christina had mentioned over the years that she's never found uh, a glove made for, for women. Anytime she had yeah. any suppliers come in and try to sell her gloves she never had that. So that was kind of a task that we took on in 2018. 
And uh, it took a few years, <laughs> lots of samples, lots of uh, taking apart gloves, and really just remodeling it. I think the biggest success for us is the fact that I'm an amateur, she's an amateur, we're both coaches. So we understand what a glove should feel like, fit like, work like, all that things. We could test it on ourselves. We have a base of clientele that we can also use for feedback. Uh, and we ask them like, whether you like it or not, let us know. And what don't you like about it so that we can really work to change it. And I will say our manufacturers maybe got a little angry at us because we were very picky, right? It's, yes. it's very different than the traditional glove. Our hand sizes are very different. So uh, Grocious Wanna Box is providing the tools. So that's the classes, the physicality, the mental, the gear in terms of uh, gloves and hand wraps right now. We're getting into, we have some sparring gear, uh, but we're also getting into uh, working with the Venus belt to get a guard protector yeah. uh, yeah. as well as headgear. So kind of really fulfilling the rest of the needs. Uh, yeah. And then the third kind of pillar is also helping out with community-based events. So setting up sparring for all of our females, doing other all-female cards, or right now we've been sponsoring them. We haven't done our own yet. Uh, but sponsoring yeah. other ones to help encourage and keep these alive. Because if they go, then where are these females going to compete? Um, yeah. So. yeah, that's amazing. I want to backtrack it. We're gonna, I'm going to come back to the like uh, female events and, and female sparring and stuff. Because that, I think it's a great topic. And um, why like the equipment itself. So let's bring it back to the gloves. And then let's bring it back to like the, the Venus protector and the other things that go with that. Because... These are questions that always come up and these are questions that I've been constantly dealing with for the last three weeks. Um, so this is a great topic right now to cover and just kind of highlight for everybody who has them. So let's let's talk about the gloves first. You know, like obviously the majority of men's hands are much wider, much bigger. Can we talk about the the padding? Because I mean, there's so many different variations of gloves and sometimes I'm in the grind of every day doing the work that I forget that I need to. I just say, oh, just get you know, bag gloves, 10 to 12 ounce bag gloves. But then I forget that there's so many varieties. It's like, well, how do people choose? And how does a woman choose? Yeah. So I think um, something that can be really tricky is that because we know all of the knowledge, we might not necessarily explain it to someone that doesn't know. So at the end of the day, you know, as the analogy goes, like talk to someone like they're a five-year-old, like talk to them like they have no idea, which they don't. They don't know, right? It's different. Like another sport, like running, you have to get a pair of running shoes. And again, that's even very broad. Um, and I say running shoes because I'm going to come back to that. But essentially, I actually have a, a pair uh, of one of our gloves right here. And I can kind of talk it through it as I talk about it. So uh, essentially with gloves, there are obviously there's two different types. There's bag gloves, which you'll use for general training on a heavy bag with maybe uh, hand pads. Um, could even be with partner work that's not sparring, but maybe just like a touching gloves. Uh, and that would be for anyone, again, doing it maybe just for the fitness side or anyone that's using it when they're not sparring. Um, there are various sizes. They're all done in ounces and it's typically based off of your weight. So a lot of, uh, if you go on to a rival or a sting or Everlast or whatever, they'll usually say if you're between 100 pounds and 110, get an eight ounce glove. If you're above this and between this, get a 10 ounce glove. And really, sometimes that can be a little difficult to use because, you know, maybe you're not in the average size of that height and weight category, right? There's some people that are, are outliers. Uh, so typically for adults, 10 or a 12 ounce for a bag glove is what we would usually say. Um, and that's yeah. really based on your hand size. I would say if you have, if you consider yourself a larger hand, then I would go with that, with that 12 ounce. The other thing that I always say to people as well too, is that you will have a hand wrap that goes inside. So like, let's say if you're able to try a glove on. So we usually do a glove fitting at our studio and we'll get people to try it on. We're like, how does that feel? I always say to people, it should feel exactly like it's, this is a shoe for your hand. Okay. And that's, <laughs> no, that's the bait, like a thing that everyone can relate to. Everyone has a walk-in yeah. into our running shoe. 
Okay. So essentially think about when you put a sock on like a thin sock, one of those like little ankle ones, that's what that hand wrap is going to be underneath in your glove. So if you feel that there's enough room for like a thin extra piece, that's perfect. You don't want it to be too tight because you need to be able to punch. You don't want it to like cramp your hand or anything like that. So you don't want it to be too, too tight, but then you also don't want your hand moving around. Right. And I think that's, that's the biggest thing is a lot of people don't understand that. Like we protect our feet so much. Why aren't we protecting our hands? <laughs> like, yeah. I think yeah. it's, you know, at the end of the day in boxing, this is what you're using as your, your tool, as your weapon, whether it's the bag or a face, like it really doesn't matter. Um, and I don't understand why people aren't protecting this just like they protect their feet. Right. Um, so I would say again, as an adult, uh, 10 or a 12 ounce bag glove. And I would say based on your hand size, if you have a, let's say an average or a smaller hand, go for that 10 ounce. If you have an average to like more so on the larger side of your hand, like if people say, oh, you have big hands, big man hands, however you want to word it, I would say go for that 12. You're 14. And big you're knockout hands, Holy. Big knockout, knockout hands. Hand. Whatever you want to call them. Uh, your 14 can be used as a sparring glove for uh, smaller uh, women and or men. Yeah. I'll throw that in there. Um, I would say typically I wouldn't recommend a 14 ounce as a bag glove unless you are a larger uh, woman or, or man. Um, it can be used, don't get me wrong. Um, but typically a 14 is for either a, uh, again, a smaller female or male looking to spar. And then a 16 ounce would be your a sparring glove. Yeah. Something that people also don't say is that your sparring glove should just be used for sparring and your bag gloves should just be used for bag. Used for day. Okay. I love that you touched on that. Cause I just touched on that on Saturday on my competitive class of it. It's the safety, right? Yeah. Like, because you're constantly putting impact on that sparring glove. And if you're using that sparring glove on the bag, you're mashing it in. And I just like, even even if you're sparring with people that aren't your teammates, but especially with your teammates, you, it's safety first. You know, sure. uh, boxing match is one thing, and, and the ref is there to keep you safe, um, and your coach ideally keep you safe. But those things need to be kept separate because they wear down. So they have to be. It is about safety first for your. Um, yeah, and think about it like that's that's less padding hitting your face or hitting their face. Um, yeah, and exactly. Out of respect, you should want that. You should want them to do that for you and you to do to do that to them. And I think sometimes some, sometimes that's not maybe mentioned. Um, now, again, if you're doing it on the side while you're waiting to like go into spar, I, I wouldn't say you have to like constantly switch. But if you're doing like a, a heavy bag class, don't wear your, your sparring gloves. Um, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So I think that's, that's an interesting point. Um, so the big thing for us is, was, was padding, right? So a lot of times, and it's very interesting, like when we open the gloves up, like sometimes there was weight like down here and like the, no weight sh should need to be here. This is where you need the padding and protection is where your knuckles are, where it's hitting the bag or hitting someone's face, whether it's sparring or not. Uh, and I think that was like our big thing was that we really wanted to add there was any weight it was going to be here and that's where it should be uh we also did a four layer foam so that it's a bit more structured um right. so a lot of the if you want to say a lot of the fitness uh gloves are done with just like it's like a molded foam uh and that does provide protection don't get me wrong but this is just a bit more structured so that um one it keeps your hand in place and your knuckles aligned and then also it adds uh, again, that four layers of protection rather than just one thick, thick one there. So that's important. I think the biggest thing as well, too, uh, is the thumb. So a lot of times the thumb will move around, especially, and that could even be in the wrist area too. So two areas that are super important is, you know, again, you want this, not this or this, right? And that's why we also typically don't get people to start hitting a bag in their first class because- <laughs> It, it's it is super dangerous. I've seen it happen a lot. And it's fine if you do that. It's just 
even sometimes I forget, like you really have to be, and I've been doing this now for a while and you really have to be, you know, prepared to punch like this. You have to be prepared to punch like this. You have to be prepared to hit with, with these first two knuckles. Um, and you have to keep it in line. And the, the wrist, first of all, if the wrist is down here, or if the cuff ends up down here, which a lot of the bigger gloves will, or a man's yeah, glove do. will give, that's not helping your wrist. It's not helping keep your wrist <laughs> online if it's down here. Um, so that, that's a big one there. Also making sure that, um, I don't know if you've had this, but where the Velcro like doesn't come around or it doesn't meet it, it's like, it's all off center because again, yeah. it's in the wrong spot. Um, and then again, the thumb just like moving around and, you know, yes, you punch with these, but like if your knuckle or your thumb is moving around and you make an improper punch, like it's very quick uh, and it's not great. <laughs> no, no, because you jam your thumb. I'm always telling like uh, everyone in class, like make a tight fist, make a tight fist, right? So even when in the gloves, because you need that that straight impact. So you're not jamming your wrist, you're not jamming your thumb. Yeah, that's a exactly. great, great point. Yeah, so like really at the end of the day, you know, boxing can be a safe sport and it is a safe sport when it's done properly. And I'll always yeah. say that. Um, but again, also having gear, two reasons why it's great to have proper gear. One, for functionality and for safety. And then two, also performance. If you're wearing like really big gloves and you're constantly like reassuring, like anything else, like that look good, feel good, right? It gives you a bit more of like, I feel more empowered in my boxing because I'm able to do things properly. So there's there's two things for that. Um, I'm hoping I answered that question. No, yeah, that's great. You're covering, you're, you're widely educating the audience right now. It's amazing. No, I. it's one of those things that like, I didn't get all this information when I started. I got, get a pair of bag gloves, get a pair of hand wraps. And what size hand wraps do you get? I don't know. The Everlast ones are very small and not to like, you know, crap on them or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know? yeah. But, you know, 120 centimeters for an adult is not long enough to get around the wrist and the knuckles, I find. Um, yeah. And so for that reason, we've done 180. That's the size we like. To be honest, it doesn't hurt to have extra. It doesn't hurt to have extra protection on either end. So, you know, go for go for a longer wrap. Yes, it will take more time to put on, but is it better that you don't have any injuries at the end or any scrapes or bruises or things like that? Probably. Yeah, yeah, no, that's amazing. Can you touch on the material for hand wraps? Because it's something that I, I educate, like the, the type of material is important as well. Yeah, um, so we do a, it's like, it's like a stretch cotton. So one mm -hmm. thing with, again, I really, I'm really bad with saying this, but again, I'm going to go back to the Everlast ones just because I got them as my first, no, my, if I'm being honest, my dad got me this like little trio. I've seen a lot of people come in the gym with them. It's a little three pound, I know. It's a great I deal. Know. It's a great deal, but there is zero yeah. give and zero stretch. And yeah. it just makes it really structured again, like anything else. It doesn't mold to your hand. Again, when you go to the pros, you get the the gauze, right? Which is like oh, yeah. super lovely. I, I learned how to like do that. Uh, but you want something that's also just, again, going to, when you create that fist, mold into your hand as opposed to just like flipping up. I don't know if that's the best way to describe it. Yeah, no, it, it, it doesn't. Molding is a perfect word because that's what it is. And it falls off and then you're fiddling with your equipment in the middle of class and then coach gets upset with you because you're not fully paying attention. <laughs> like, and yeah. then the big thing that I always say to people, especially when you're wrapping your hands and I do this when I wrap someone else's hands, but like, do you need to do it for yourself? Like open up your fingertips just a little bit when you wrap. So it's not too tight. Uh, Cause sometimes like I've seen like purple fingers and I'm like, you just, that's a little too tight. <laughs> so if you need to just like open it up as you wrap it, um, you know, again, like anything else you want it tight enough that it's, you know, making a, a strong fist, but you also don't want it where it's hurting or too tight. Yeah, cutting off your circulation. Yeah, yeah. No purple yeah. fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no to purple fingers. Only in purple sweater. Only purple sweaters. <laughs> Only purple sweaters. Okay, so let's talk about the the Venus 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Protect it. So um, I'll, I'll bring into conversation that the majority of protective, like we call kidney jock straps for men out there is like, obviously like a cup and then it goes around your kidneys, but women's parts are not like that. Obviously where our parts are inside, their parts are outside, you know? So can we talk about the Venus and like kind of how that. Yeah. So you guys something came up that we've learned over the years is we not, we can't necessarily create everything ourselves. This was a really big project. We love it. Very happy with this. But at the same time, we're not here to, to invent other things, but we can definitely collaborate with, with people. So we've been working with the Venus belt to create uh, the, the female version of a groin guard, because essentially that's what it is. And if you go anywhere, you look it up online, if you want to look for a protector for females, it's, it's, it's known as a groin protector or a Jill, right? Because it's the opposite to a jock. Uh, so essentially, when you are sparring, uh, at the end of the day, you need a headgear. And that's always been uh, announced. You need a headgear, you need a mouthpiece, you need your sparring gloves. Something that's always been an optional thing. And after doing a few courses with Boxing Ontario, Boxing Canada, it's optional to wear two things. Uh, one is a chest protector and one is uh, the groin guard or the jill. Can we back the chest protector up? I mean, it's optional in terms of what? So in terms of like competition, you you do not have to wear a chest protector. Oh, because we are always, anytime I was in the corner, they're always like tap. Like I knew the, yeah. So I thought it was mandatory. Uh, last time I checked and I will go back because I, I don't want to incorrect myself, but I'm pretty sure they are now uh, optional. Because I, I, eh? I, I didn't have to wear one when I competed in 2019. Uh. Yeah, so they are optional. Um, I will say, and I'm being completely honest, I am a very small chested woman. I personally don't know if I would necessarily need a chest protector. I, there's not much to protect if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> um, but I'm going to go down go to our Venus belt. So, uh, <laughs> but the, the other thing that's optional, which is not optional for men, men do have to wear a groin guard. Yeah, they don't have to wear it. Oh, yeah. Whether that's I'm seeing them when they don't, that they throw up green. They need to wear. <laughs> we had we had a guy at our old gym, and he like went in, and I don't know, maybe I looked away, and he left, and I'm like, what happened? And someone's like, he forgot his groin guard. So they do check the men. They do not check the women because again, it's optional. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's a very important piece of gear that should be required, like a mouth guard and a headgear. If, if, if we had our say, that's where it would, it would, it wouldn't be optional anymore. Uh, and essentially at the end of the day, we, uh, our ovaries are down here. Um, yep. and we do not need, we do not need to get body shots down here for no reason. Uh, and I know, um, you know, one of, so Adrian, uh, has created the Venus belt. We've collabed with him to make it. And I know one thing that he has always said is he has, uh, a few sisters, I can't remember the exact number, four or five, I might be wrong on that. But he was, he's always said he has a lot of junior girls at his and he's saying, why do they need to have any bursting? Why do they need to have any of these injuries that can be easily, easily removed with one piece of protection? Um, and it can save them years down the road. Uh, if they do want to have kids, you know, let's, let's not impede our opportunities because to be honest, after learning with all my friends that are trying to have kids, it's already a difficult process. Let's not try and add an extra layer to that. Um, and it, you know, it's if if you get the right one, it's really it's flat to to the body. I've had my one because I am always function over fashion. Came up to here. It's a great <laughs> side. I wish I I wish I had it. It is basically a huge <laughs> diaper. But my prop, my thought was, I want to be protected and I care more about that than looking fashionable. Yeah. And at the end of the day, if I, like, I don't come out of the ring after sparring looking fashionable anyway. So I figured <laughs> it's not like, it's not going to help or hurt me that I have this diaper on. And it was so big that I could, 
I put like my mouth guard, like container yeah. in there. I could put like a banana in there. Like it was so big, so obnoxious. First of all, it doesn't need to be that high. That's not, it, it needs to be just, just at your, what your belly just button. Your, yeah. Your belly button, just below it's, your ribs and stuff. Yeah. So right. how did you, so you, you brought that up and you're reminding me all the times of having to tape myself again and again with these <laughs> Like they're, they're like, they're wild. I, I, I next, if, if I come on with Christina, I'll just be in the background with my, with my <laughs> side diaper, but yeah. So, you know, and I think again, if it's not, uh, required a yeah. lot of the times, a lot of people will, will not get it. And again, let's think about the safety of it. You know, yeah. I think a little bit of money is worth the safety of, um, of the, of the sport. And that's where I think that things need to be changed. I think it needs one, there needs to be more education on it because I would even say, unfortunately, there's not a lot of female coaches. There are starting to be more and more and very excited about that, but there's, I would say still a majority male coaches. Oh yeah. If you were to even talk to them about having your period, like that's a, a non-discussion. I couldn't imagine talking to them about understanding why it's important for you to have a, a groin guard or Jill or Venus belt, you know, whatever you want to call it. And so I think there's a lack of education on the coach's part, which then leads down to the athletes because really as an athlete and depending on how old you are, you know, you're, it's always like, well, I'll do whatever coach says. Coach told me I got to do this. I'm going to do this. And so if the coach says, Hey, you need sparring gloves, you need a mouthpiece, you need a headgear, and you need some sort of protection there, whether it's a Venus belt with us or the ringside one, you know, whatever you get, I think at the end of the day, protection is, is, is important. It should be required just like the other ones. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great, great, great point that it's like a trickle down effect and we need to educate, you know, on um, both um, male and female coaches to to pass these things down to our athletes that's incredible yeah. um so is it like uh you and, and chris work together really closely on this but is there a specific reason that really inspired you to like just jump right into this mission with her so for me like i said so it was it was really interesting i uh i love an excel spreadsheet i i like organization mm -hmm. uh and that was the reason why she asked me to help her with the uh, national team in Quebec okay. City. That would have been the 2017. And I just said, sure. And we had been talking and she, you know, described her whole box. You know, I don't know what the drive to Quebec City is. I'm not even going to guess, but it's, it's a few hours. And it's a lot of time to like, let's get to know each other. We've done the surface level chat at the gym, but it was, you know, I got to learn like how she started in boxing and where it took her and the highs and the lows. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I had always said to her, I, my dad is an entrepreneur and I've always kind of wanted to go down that route. I had been looking at different franchise opportunities actually at the time. And I don't know, it just, we were talking and she was saying how, you know, she's, she's doing this, but there's also so much to accomplish that it's hard for yeah. one person. And I, I can go into that in a second, but that's the reason why like we have our ambassador team. That's the reason why we want to encourage other girls and women to start their own boxing clubs or classes even. Let's not go as, you know, as, as big as a club because we can't, we can't do this on our own, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why we, you know, we've teamed up with people like yourself who is uh, really passionate about the sport and really wants it to thrive also has a great extensive background in it uh, to also, you know, we can't be everywhere. We can't do everything. So um, going back to the car, I was like, I was kind of like, maybe I could team up with Christina. And I didn't say anything to her in the moment. I was just kind of like thinking in my head, I'm like, maybe I could jump, jump in this, uh, not having much boxing background or experience, but being like, it's something that I, you know, boxing, I would say really changed me as a human. Like if I'm just being yeah. honest and I think it was like, how can I 
give this, how can I basically give this to someone else? And hopefully more than one person, but someone else. And that's where it kind of started was it was like boxing really changed our lives and our world and, and our brains and our physicality. And how can we give this to more women? Because there is so much self-conscious body awareness, um, mental, whatever. And I think women deserve to be empowered in their body and they deserve to feel strong in their body and they deserve to feel confident. So, uh, we're using boxing as a way to do that. And that's kind of, um, how it kind of came to be. Came to Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like there's so many things over the years, uh, that we've had to overcome as women in sport. Um, I read the book, I think it was about a year ago now, let's get physical. And it was all about the history of women's sports and the obstacles that we've, we've had to overcome just highlighting women in sports, you know, like um, one of the examples, cause you've done a marathon was the lady who ran the marathon in Boston and she was the first marathon runner. Uh, I don't remember her name now. I wish that sometimes I remember her names. Um, but she was literally tackled when they found out she was a woman and she dressed up like baggy clothes. It didn't even highlight that she needed to get off. And like, this was in the sixties, you know, and women's boxing have, it hasn't, we, I mean, Mary Spencer was the first to represent Canada in 2012. Boxing and wrestling are the two oldest sports in the Olympics, you know, so we're finally at that pivotal point where it's really starting to be recognized and taking off. But now it's the education piece of all these indiscrepancies that still we have to fill in those gaps, right? Of, of I don't know if I would say in quality and equity. Um, I was, when Jennifer Higgins was on here the other week, we were talking, she mentioned on that and it was a great point because it is it is in it is important to educate well-rounded both men and both women on all aspects of the sport right yeah because I was I would just watch the uh press conference after the Natasha Jonas and Michaela Mayer fight and one thing she said which I had actually reposted on Girls Just on a Box is she said the women are supporting the women the women are there to help each other out. She said, what we need now is we need the men to get on board and fulfill the, the gap that's missing. Right. And because the women are supporting the women, the women are, you know, we've, anytime I've reached out to say, Hey, can you help out with sparring? Hey, can you do this? Any woman is like, got it on it. Yeah. Let's help you out. No payment required. Just like, let's do you a favor but we also need the men to help support us and help us with our, our push forward. Yeah. Great. Great. Um, so what has been the three kind of toughest obstacles since you kind of got on this journey with girls just want a box. Can you kind of highlight a little bit of that? Uh, I think the one th- first and foremost, if we're going to talk product is going back and forth with samples and rejigging and, really I don't want to say perfect because nothing in boxing is perfect but trying to get nothing in boxing is perfect but trying to get it let's say as perfect as possible right to the best it can be uh and that's you know getting a a, a pair of gloves or getting shipments that are not great that's been a a big uh thing for us and I think that's any kind of product based business um the secondary thing which I I would imagine a lot of women can relate to this is having to list my credentials, having to prove myself as a female coach and or fighter. You know, uh, if I've worked with, with other either male athletes or coaches, they're like, Oh, what have you done? And I'm like, first of all, I don't need to prove anything to you because I've either been hired for this position or you've hired me or X, Y, Z. But I find that, you know, even um, at the nationals, I remember like Christina had to, she felt like she had to be like, I have this, this, and this. And none of the male coaches had to list their, their credentials. Um, So I think that, I think something that, and I've heard this, so is just the idea that we have to say, like, I've like, I, I will say this, I feel like I don't need to but I feel like I have more street cred now that I've had an amateur fight. And yeah, I think yeah. that as a coach, I'm respected more 
at the end of the day, I really don't need to fight to be a good coach. And I wanted to do it for myself, but I also felt like that was like an added element and bonus to it was that now I can be like, oh, well, I'm also not how I fight under my belt. So I can, I can, I can hang with the guys if, if you will. Um, yeah. Okay. A third one, a third one. Let's think. Uh, I would say this is a bit more personal. But I would say, I guess, just the idea of like imposter syndrome. Uh, mm. And I think that that's, I think like anything else, it's scary going on this journey that's a little unknown. Uh, are people going to take to it? Um, you know, and I think that that's, that's something I need to kind of work on myself. And boxing has really helped with that. Don't get me wrong. But I think sometimes, you know, it's like, I believe in the product. I believe in the service. Will other people as well? Um, and I think that that's, yeah, that was a bit more personal, not necessarily on the yeah. business side. No, thank you for, no, thank you for highlighting and being transparent with that because it is, you know, we all have this journey in life when we all have these, I, I want to, I call them demons sometimes, you know, that, that come up and it's be like, well, who am I to say about this and this and this, even though that's your dream and that may be your vision or that's your goal for yourself. We all have these kind of two sides of the devilish coin that like to talk to us, right? So thank you for for highlighting highlighting that. Um, have you ever wanted to quit in the last few years? Yes, actually. And not not on the business side of things. So um, I had actually done a podcast uh, more so on the mental health side of things. So as you had briefly mentioned in the, in the intro, uh, not to like super dive into it, but uh, I do uh, have OCD and it mostly my, my main uh, subtype is germs and contamination, which over the course of COVID was extremely difficult. Uh, if yes. anyone wants to imagine basically like my worst nightmare came true, uh, essentially. And it, it, I can kind of laugh about it now and smile about it at the time. Definitely no laughter. Um, yes. but basically I, said to myself, I'm like, can I still, you know, be a coach one-on-one -on -one with a client? Can I still spar? Can I still compete? And those thoughts went through my head and that really scared me. Um, yeah. for that reason, uh, because, you know, I had had one, I've had one fight in 2019. I would like to compete again. Um, and yeah. Um, and I, I have, um, I, I have gone over that pump. Um, but there was, uh, I don't know, probably one to two years of me being like, I, I don't, I don't know. Right. Um, and right. so that was really difficult. Um, I'll, I'll mention this. I actually don't think I've said this out loud, but I was meant to fight last March and my mental health was, was too much that I, I had to, um, I didn't make the decision to not compete my coaches and it was the right decision um, said that they, they were, they said, you, you're not going to, to compete. And that was heartbreaking. Um, yeah. It was heartbreaking. Because it was the right decision. You know, when you're like, I know it's the right decision, but I don't like it anyway. It was that scenario. Uh, and so, yes, there have been moments where I wanted to quit um, but I've been working on uh, a few things and we've been, uh, we've been getting better and I've still been coaching. I worked with, uh, Cheryl, who you met, uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, I worked with her one-on-one, -on -one, so we were very close. Yeah. Um, and I've been sparring, uh, in between since. So, uh, things have been on the other side, but nice. I've seen, I've seen this side. Um, yeah. Well, congratulations. I'm coming out on the on the other side. Maybe can you highlight a, a little bit in terms of how you feel that boxing kind of helped you bring you to the other side? Because I, I think that and, and that's part of the reason why I do the vlog is to educate, you know, boxing is often seen as violence. Yeah. Right. Um, but there's so much of the easy health and not easy as in like it comes easy. Easy comes from putting the work in. But um, that has helped you go from like one end of the spectrum to the other end? I think one thing that's great about the sport of boxing 
is you actually don't have to work with anyone. You don't need a partner. You, I mean, you don't need, and you don't need to work one-on-one with a coach. So for me, you know, and I'll, I'll happily say this. So when I started going back to training at the gym, I did what I call is the bridesmaids version where the class was here and I was here doing it. So I was further away from everyone. If you watch the movie, it's great. Uh, And so that's how I started. I was like, what do I feel comfortable with? So whether that's going to one class a week or whether it's doing it virtually from home um, or whether it's doing like a YouTube video online, like whatever, whatever that looks like for you, I think you need to figure out what the starting point is. And so for me, that was like, I'm going to go into the studio, but I'm going to be further away because that's where I feel the most comfortable. And then as I, you know, as I did that for, I don't know, let's say I did that for four weeks, let's say, for example, I don't remember now. Then it was like, okay, now let's get closer to the class and start working with the class. Okay. Okay. You know, I, um, I think the one thing that, that uh, is great about boxing is in that hour, hour and a half, two hours, however long your class is, 45 minutes, 30, OCD brain, my brain is working a mile a minute. I am thinking about everything. It's called rumination. And it is just yeah. boom, 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 boom. And in that boxing class, I don't, all of that leaves my brain, which is phenomenal. The only time that yeah. also leaves my brain is when I'm sleeping. Sleeping, <laughs> the only two times... My brain is not working a mile a minute. And so basically every time I did that, I felt also more empowered and strong being like, I did that. I can do, I can do this again. So I did it again. I got got closer to the class. And then um, for me, I was still wearing a mask at the time. I was like, maybe I could spar with a mask. So I did that. Um, And so again, I just slowly added more in and if it's a beginner starting with boxing it's you know going to one class and doing what you can and maybe the first class you only do four of the six rounds and you keep doing that and then you start feeling better and maybe the next uh, next few times you do five rounds like we always say to everyone like you need to take a break go for it we have structured breaks but like everyone's fitness level is different everyone's health is different at different stages So take it as you need. If I say pick it up and you can't, go at the level that you can. So that's kind of how boxing helped me is that, you know, I can take it at my own pace. I can ease my way in. I do need to push myself when I need to. But I also have the, and one thing I will say is like, you finish a boxing class, you feel like an absolute hero. Like, (laughs) I I just did that. I just did that. (laughs) Why, that's why for me it's like hashtag boxing saves lives because it's all different levels right like it's yeah. it's not just yeah. it's not just for that professional person that's stepping into the ring it's for that that little kid who needs to come off the street kind of deal too. parkinson's you know fighting back against their parkinson's every day that's their opponent you know yeah. so it's it's all and the little steps constantly that's uh that's awesome 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 um so do you have a specific definition of success that you have for yourself or that you want to highlight maybe that, that you and Chris have with Girls Just Want to Box? So, you know, I, I don't want to be cliche and be like, it's not about the money. And, and it, you know, we are, we are a business-based business, but I think what, like, what breaks my heart and soul in a good way and, like, just makes me want to weep is when – you know, we have girls that come to the gym that'll come to sparring and they'll be like, you know, they felt safe, they felt comfortable and they had a good time. And I think nice. that hearing that is so important because, you know, we have lots of uh, older coaches that will come being like, I've never seen this. Like there's, there's nothing like this, you know, and seeing like the girls come together, there's a lot of girls that have come and they've made friends now They don't necessarily always spar at our gym. They go and they go to each other's. And I think that's really important is seeing the community come together and, you know, for the sparring, it's free for everyone. They come, they do it and they leave. Um, And, you know, we've had some people be like, can we pay you? And it's like, no, that's not the point of this 
event. If you want to pay us, come to one of our events that is paid for and, and kind of um, do it that way. Or but bring your friends. <laughs> sure. But it's, it's also like one of those things, I think what's the most important is when we hear, um, you know, a girl that's felt safe and supported and, um, and had, and had a good time. Like at the end of the day, whether you're doing it for fun or for real, it is your extra time. It is your extra yeah. money that you are using. You should be enjoying it to some degree. Yeah. You're not going to be maybe enjoying it the whole class or the whole sparring session or whatever, but some of it should be fun. Some of it should be yeah. fun. You know, like it's, you're, you're spending all this extra time, money, uh, brain space to do this. Like, so yeah, I think the the success of us is seeing not only like our studio grow, but seeing our community of sparring grow and seeing other studios also doing the same thing. Um, and just seeing, seeing the growth of women's boxing and seeing the yeah. growth of like our teen girl class is growing, which is great. Um, even just seeing like we have, so we have as young as seven, seven years old. And then we have as young as 60 year old yeah, and everything in between. And I think that's also important to see as well too. Like that shows that again, everyone is welcome. Right. And, and wherever you're at age and stage fitness level, uh, even, uh, weight. And that's the one thing that I love about boxing is that it's, it's inclusive in the sense that there is minimum weight to super heavyweight and everything in between. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, you, you highlighted what, uh, when I uh, interviewed a vet, it's like boxing was inclusive before inclusive was cool. <laughs> like a yeah. thing to do. Right. You know, so that's, that's great that you, you've highlighted that. Um, is there three pieces of advice or wisdom to kind of pass on the lessons that you've learned to others that are watching this about this journey? Uh, I would say go into a boxing gym that's going to teach you the real sport. <laughs> so you don't have to undo bad habits. First and Sorry, I just, I have to laugh because it's like how many times that I've had people over the years come in and they're like, oh, I've watched like YouTube videos. And I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> like, so if you are going to watch YouTube videos, watch certain ones, right? Uh, yeah. So, and again, that's a bit more personal on my journey, but I also think as well too, again, then that's starting you off on, let's say the bad foot or whatever that is. So I would say, you know, do that. So learn the real sport again, for both your physical and your mental. Uh, secondary is, you know, try and, um, I, I think it's important. I do this as well is to journal. And again, uh, Apple now has a super cool new feature. You can just type it on your phone. Um, but I think seeing your progress, like throughout your boxing journey, your fitness journey, your health journey, whatever you want to call it, I think is really important. You don't have to do pictures. If you want to do pictures, you can totally do that. But I think like seeing your progress of how you feel is super strong and powerful. Um, 100%. So again, you know, you can, you can sit down and write on pen and paper. You can make a voice note. There's so many ways to do it now. You don't have to sit and do pen and paper. You can type it out on your phone. You can write yourself an email, however that looks. But I think it's really cool to see. Like I go back to one of my old journals and I'm like, it was a bad, a bad. It was a hard sparring session. And I'm like, why am I doing this? Well, why am I doing this? <laughs> you know? And, but then again, it's good to look back at that and be like, no, seriously, what is my reason? Why am I doing this? Why am I pushing myself outside my comfort zone? Um, and then on third of that is like, push yourself a little bit outside your comfort zone. And, and I, I think you grow mentally, physically, whatever that is. Um, you know, if you can, uh, maybe do partner drills, right? If you're, if you're, you don't want to go sparring, that's that I totally understand that, but like, Try something where like you just see a punch coming at you and you have to move, let's say. Um, or if you're in lifting and that sort of thing, like try adding a bit more weight when you can. If you're running, try adding, you know, a little bit more or lessen your time, whatever that is, but like push the envelope so that you can prove to yourself that you can do it. 
and then reward yourself for doing it. That's great. Yeah. Uh, when you say prove to yourself that you can do it and then reward yourself for doing it, um, maybe can you give a little bit of examples? Like in my mind, because I do a ton of personal development, that's my OCD over the years since everything that I have with my son. But for anyone else watching, um, maybe if you can highlight a little what you think proving to yourself is and what you think like rewarding yourself like how that's important or how you do that? Well, I think that I was listening to a podcast yesterday or the day before, and it was with Jay Shetty, whether you listen to him or not. Uh, and yeah. he had, okay. And he had said, which I was like, totally true is we celebrate big things for an hour, a day or an evening. And we usually mourn our negative thoughts whatever we didn't do for days, weeks, months, could be years, depending on what it is. And so something I'm really trying to work on is celebrating more. Um, because I think we always celebrate the little things or or the bigger moments, like we celebrate yes. birthdays or weddings or uh, um, can't, uh, retirements, what, whatever that is. I, I can't think yeah. of milestones in our lives. But what about... Um, you know, we did a really awesome business presentation, you know, or maybe again, if we're going back to boxing, let's say you had done, you could only do four rounds the first few weeks and you ate, were able to do five, like be proud of yourself, write that down, like celebrate that moment. Um, or for example, you got up early to go for a run in the morning before work because you want to have your cardio be, be better for boxing. Like, Again, just like little things, like we, we forget to um, reward ourselves for those things. You know, I'm sure you've seen the quote where it's like, if you got up today, you ate and you had water, like you should be grateful. And it, it's totally true. Like at the end of the day, those 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 things that we take for granted for are the things that we should be most grateful for. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for thanks for sharing that. I mean, that's that's absolutely awesome. So let's, uh, where can everyone find, find you? Yeah. So we and are, can... so girls just want a box. We're on Facebook. We are on Instagram. We do have a TikTok uh, as well. <laughs> it's all, <laughs> at girls just want a box. I know we've, we've, we're slowly delving into that. Uh, and I'm laughing at your stuff. It would be coming out on TikTok. Cause yeah. Sorry. <laughs> So we're yeah. at Girls Just Want a Box everywhere. Uh, my personal one is also on our Instagram, which is at Helene uh, And and then we have our website as well to www.girlsjustwantabox.com. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much for being here today, uh, Helene. That was amazing and great education, great stuff to unfold. And for any of the women and girls that are watching or any of the men that want to educate themselves, I hope you got a lot out of this. Um, please comment what you kind of found the most useful or insightful uh, with this interview and um, stay tuned to next Thursday. Uh, our special guest is yet to be announced, <laughs> but we will have uh, Chris, the founder, Christina uh, E, the founder of Girls Just Want a Box um, up and coming up on a separate interview in the near future. So thank you again, Helene, so much for following us here. And for everyone who's following Button Adventures, make sure you subscribe to buttonadventures.com for um, straight interviews that go to your inbox and health and wellness and fitness tips that go straight to your inbox as well. So you guys have an amazing rest of your day. And we, we will be in touch. <laughs> Keep those together. Protect the pretty. <laughs> sure. That's